purpose of the research is to provide, as far as we know, the first empirical measures of the economic impact of targeted sanctions. Now, sanctions has been a long-used tool of foreign policy. In fact, there are records that go all the way back to 432 BC, uh, where sanctions was used as a part of foreign policy. But the usage of targeted sanctions, where specific individuals and entities are isolated, um, is a relatively newer uh, tool of foreign policy. And uh, this study was trying to, again, measure what the impact of targeted sanctions has been. And this is where the Orbis database comes in, uh, because Orbis is able to provide us that very detailed firm and individual level networked data to allow us to track the financial health of the entities, such as their operating revenue, their asset holdings, their number of employees, as well as the relationship between the firms and the sanctioned individuals uh, that allow us to do this big data study, quote unquote, uh, successfully. This is where the breadth and comprehensiveness of the Orbis data comes into play. The way we differentiate the impact of sanctions as opposed to the effect of these confounding factors is to, in analogy to a pharmaceutical drug trial, uh, create a treatment group of firms that have been sanctioned and a control group of peer firms that share similar characteristics to the sanctioned firm, such as the country that they operate in, the business sector that they operate in, the age of the firm, the size of the firm, uh, but which have not been sanctioned, to uh, back out the specifically the impact of the sanction itself versus the impact of confounding factors uh, such as in the case of Russia the big decline in oil prices in 2014, uh, the related depreciation of the ruble, other big macroeconomic and political factors uh, that uh, surround uh, the imposition of sanctions on Russia. I know that my colleagues uh, in the State Department, uh, in the Treasury Department, and other agencies of the United States government that uh, work within the sanctions process uh, work very hard uh, to help the private sector um, uh, understand the sanctions process um, and make it as transparent as possible. But nevertheless, we should recognize uh, that it needs to be a true partnership between the sanctioning authorities and the private sector, because it's the private sector that is really doing all of the hard work uh, with the implementation of sanctions uh, to make sure that uh, uh, illegitimate transactions are blocked while legitimate transactions go through. I've been personally fascinated uh, by the emergence of new kinds of fintech and regtech companies that are using the latest in uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and big data techniques uh, to uh, help develop sophisticated algorithms uh, for the private sector to do sanctions compliance, to do anti-money laundering, to do know your customer uh, processes. So we suspect that uh, the technology sector will become an ever more important player and partner uh, with uh, the private sector and with uh, sanctioning authorities to ensure uh, that sanctions compliance uh, is successful. <laughs>